VBI, a pipeline of game-changing vaccines. Let's hear the story. Jeff, you just announced a merger with Cyvac Therapeutics on May 6, 2016 of this year. How does this change the value proposition of VBI vaccines? Yeah, it, it really is a game changer because we previously were an early clinical development company, but this transaction totally propelled us into having a marketed asset, which whilst at the moment is only licensed in more minor markets, has the opportunity to be a blockbuster product in North America, Northern Europe and uh, Japan. Wow, it sounds really exciting. And that's the Cybivac uh, hepatitis B vaccination. Exactly. This is a third generation vaccine, particularly developed for those people who didn't respond to the current standard of care. So the data at a lower dose and fewer doses really does outperform the current standard of care. Amazing. Now, for a lot of our viewers out there, they like to understand about the company and where they're traded. You were on the NASDAQ market, but with this merger, you're also listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange as well, correct? Correct. So this, again, was a game-changing transaction in terms of the financial structure of the company. Uh, we previously were on NASDAQ and had three significant long-term healthcare-only biotech specialist investors. Mm -hmm. This transaction also brought into that uh, mix another significant long-term healthcare investor and also added in a dual listing with TSX. Great. Can we talk a little bit about those names, Jeff? I mean, you have some of the premier investors in this space, so tell our audience about them. Sure. So first and foremost, Cyvac, uh, the acquisition, reverse acquisition, brought into our portfolio of investors Dr. Phil Frost and Opco. Opco are a very, very significant uh, biotech company based in America, four to five billion market cap, with a portfolio of companies of which they have uh, interests in. And we are now become part of that family. Mm -hmm. They are our largest shareholder. Our second largest shareholder, which was Legacy from VBI, is Perceptive Life Science Advisors, mm. a US-based fund. In fact, last year, we're the most successful biotech-only fund in North America. Wow. In addition, we have our two legacy venture investors from when we were a private company, which is Arch Ventures and Claris, both of whom are billion-dollar-plus life sciences only investment houses. Fantastic, Jeff. So these are the who who investors of the healthcare biotechnology life sciences field. I mean, just wondering between management and these investors, what percentage of the company do they own? Yeah, so management employees, which is a very important part of our engagement process, own approximately 12% of the company. Mm -hmm. In addition, a further 68% is owned by those four institutional investors I just mentioned. So that roughly translates to about 80% of our common stock mm -hmm. being owned by either long-term fundamental specialist healthcare investors or the employees of the company. Well, that's fantastic testament to uh, the company and the platform and technology that you've built. Now, looking at it, I saw recently that you did an insider's round and they actually added more money to the company. Exactly. Um, so just to strengthen the balance sheet and to set us up for the major catalyst we have over the next 18 months, we just raised almost 14 million US dollars, as you say, uh, from our significant major inside investors. And so that was the maximum we could raise under NASDAQ and TSX rules for existing insiders. So uh, the details of that were that Opco invested five and a half million, Perceptive Life Science investors invested five and a half million, and Arch Ventures and uh, Steve Gillis, our chairman, invested a further two and a half million. Mm -hmm. And following up on that, Jeff, talking about some of those catalysts going forward that they invested for, can you enlighten us uh, what some of those are? Sure. So we have a really exciting portfolio of early stage invest, uh, early stage assets, which are the classic early stage high risk but very high return. They all have the potential to be multi-billion dollar products in completely unmet medical needs. So really high innovation scientific solutions to significant unmet medical issues in the seven major markets. And so in that bucket, we've already started a phase one trial for our CMV asset, and that is enrolling currently, and we expect that to read out with the interim read out in the first half of next year. And the field is really excited about this. One key opinion leader said, this is the most exciting candidate and data that he's seen for 25 years in the area of congenital CMV, which is the largest cause of birth defects in seven major markets. So that data will read out early next year and should give us, assuming we're successful, a human proof of concept. 
Secondly, uh, with our extension of the VLP platform into immunology, we have a very exciting uh, candidate for glioblastoma, adult brain cancer mm -hmm. and medulloblastoma, paediatric brain cancer. We uh, will progress that such that we can submit an IND to the FDA before the end of this year, and that is due to start clinical trials early next year. Now, due to the really unfortunate morbidity of this uh, type of cancer, as I say, unfortunately, we get a human proof of concept readout very quickly in terms of extension of survival. So that's in the early stage portfolio. But leaping forward to this late stage marketed asset, Whilst Cybivac is licensed in Israel and several other uh, highly regulated markets, we need to do a registration trial in Europe and in the US. Mm -hmm. So we will be discussing that clinical development plan with the FDA and with the European Medicine Agency, and we'd expect to start the clinical trial, the registration clinical trials for Cybivac early next year. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Well, fantastic. I mean, we have a well-funded company with incredible management, some of the leading investors out there. I see nothing but success in the future. Really, really exciting, Jeff. If investors want to get more information, you have a website you can point them towards? We do. It's vbivaccines.com. Um, and everything you need is there, including lots of educational videos on our pipeline. Jeff, sounds really exciting. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. Thank you, Ed. My pleasure. We're uh, really excited about the future for VBI. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Edward Carr with the Global Biotech Network in conjunction with Dukascopy TV. Stay tuned for more future interviews.